I decided to make a gift for a friend of mine who um, sewed some wonderful quilts for my family and myself. So I decided to take this little $7 house-shaped box I found at Big Lots and make it into a miniature quilting room for her. So first step was to choose a wallpaper. I picked a, a nice pale, um, like a floral print from Itsy Bitsy Mini. I actually have had that paper a long time, so I'm not sure if they still make it. Um, so I painted the box to match the paper. It, um, when I purchased it, it was white. I painted it cream just with some spray paint, just so um, I wouldn't have to worry about the corners. Um, used some grand, Grandma Stouffer's glue to put in the wallpaper. When you do that, you wanna measure carefully and then of course cover the entire back of your paper with the glue. Don't leave any, um, like I used to, like when I first started doing this, I used to just kind of go around the edges and maybe throw some in the middle and I always got air bubbles. So you wanna make sure, like in this video, I'm very carefully covering the whole back of the paper with the glue. It will make your life so much easier because you won't get air bubbles as long as you smooth out everything carefully. Um, I also like to cut my paper with a, a clear ruler and an X-Acto knife. I find that a lot easier than using a scissors or using like a paper cutter. And then you want to make sure you smooth it down a lot. If you're wallpapering a whole dollhouse room, I would use a credit card or spatula or something. But here it's such a small little house. I'm just using my finger to really smooth everything down. And so here is the completed wallpaper job. Next, I'm going to move on to the flooring. I bought some flooring from Minimum World. I'll, um, I'll look it up and I'll put it in the comments onto what I used. This stuff is really nice because it's easy to cut. You can cut it with a like a box cutter, an X-Acto knife, or even a scissors if you're really careful. Um, it's peel and stick, which is just so nice because um, one of my least favorite things is is gluing. So the less gluing I have to do, the better. I love painting. I love choosing wallpaper. I love um, decorating, but using a brush to glue on stuff is just not my, I, I find it a little tedious. So anyway, this peel and stick stuff is pretty great. I find it so easy to use. I was able to cut a piece the first time that almost was perfect. There was just a little bit, there was one um, piece of wood that I ended up having to split with my knife. So, um, so first I fit it in and then I went back and I took one more little peel and stick piece and I cut it in half uh, just by eyeballing it and then um, stuck that down in there. Yeah, there's the little piece and just gonna carefully cut away from my finger. <laughs> Be careful on this step. Uh, cut away from my finger and just kind of eyeball that into there. Fastest dollhouse flooring job I've ever done because it's such a small room. So every quilter needs an ironing board. Um, this one unfolds, but I actually glued it to where it would stay open and added a little support piece so that it wouldn't um, possibly come undone. Then I built a, a table. I glued the fourth leg into the corner of the room and let that dry. And then I built the table and then I glued them together. It didn't have to be that way. That's just, I found that to be easier. And then I had this adorable green cutting mat that um, I know a, a quilter would find ha uh, handy. I think I got the quilting or the green cutting mat from Itsy Bitsy Mini. I'll double check that too. I'll put all this stuff in the um, comments. And then I thought, um, I'm gonna need a little like chair or something. Why not use a spool of thread as a um, like dollhouse stool so that when um, when my little doll friend uh, makes a quilt, she can sit on that spool of thread. So um, I found an empty spool, put some cardboard on top, and then added some lavender felt and just glued that on top. And that was my stool. Um, I built some shelves out of these uh, brackets and then just some basswood. There's a shelf in. I found the little shelf with the mini spools of thread at Minimum World. It was like 3 or $4. I could have made that, but it was just so much faster to just purchase it. 
My friend that I'm making this gift for also does these gorgeous hand-painted rock. So here I'm doing like a mediocre attempt at um, what she does in real life. Uh, she, you know, she'll put these like, I think it's called a Mandela design. So I decided to call this project Estelle's Command Center because my friend who I'm uh, giving this to, uh, that's what she calls the part of her living room that she does her quilting and her uh, rock painting in. Someone had gifted me that tiny sewing machine it's a pendant for a necklace, but it really works. I added a watch battery and I stuck that in there. Used some block letters to make a sign just to show, because I hope that my, my, my hope is that she would want to hang this in her living room in her command center. I took some more of that peel and stick flooring and added it around the front as a border just to really finish it off. On the back, I took some felt from, um, I believe, Dollar Tree and stuck them on the back so that if she hangs it on her wall, it won't scratch up her wall in any way. Um, here I took uh, some detailed video of uh, the process that I used to do the roofing. So I had already, I already had these uh, roof tiles that were... Um, or shingles, I should say, that were that I had died a long time ago. And what's funny is I don't even know what project that was for. I looked at all my projects and I'm like, that doesn't match any of those. Um, anyway, in this case, I lucked out because the sh exactly four shingles fit across the roof. So it was really easy to just glue four. And then I on the next layer up, I would glue three in the center. And then just with the scissors, um, just rip the other piece and use them on the edges. And so here I'm showing in real time about how long it takes me to glue. Um, a full dollhouse does take a while. It's a little tedious. But this was so fast because it was such a small project. So I think I show the first three rows of shingles going on. And then I'll speed it up a little bit. I'm just using Aileen's uh, tacky glue. I find that works just fine. And... Probably I should let the rows dry before I keep going, but I honestly, I just, I don't find much trouble with just gluing a row and then gluing the next row, gluing the next row, you know, and just carefully repositioning as I go. If this was a full dollhouse with a very long roof, I would measure like some guidelines. I'd take a clear ruler and a pencil and um, maybe even a level and, you know, put some lines on, draw some lines on the roof before I start gluing, just because after a while you can start to go a little uphill or a little downhill with your row and not realize it till it kind of snowballs and then you're really crooked. On this, it was easy to just look at it because it was not even four inches wide. Um, so here I am just adding some more shingles. So yeah, if you're um, in a moment, I'll show the the ridge line of the roof i do a different technique there um, some other things with this project are um, i used a lot of different glues on this project <clears throat> so there's the grandmother stouffer's glue for the um, wallpaper i use the tacky glue for the shingles i also ended up using some super glue on the inside to put all of the little um like the little miniatures I used to decorate the shelves and things. And I used also some hot glue to, um, to put some of the th items down as well. And it's, it's, I, I, I should have a rhyme or reason to what kind of glue I use for what I, I use the tacky glue for almost everything, especially wood on wood. I don't find that I need to have spe like specific wood glue. Um, tacky glue is really great. For things that um, I want to stick down pretty quickly, the hot glue is good. And then for tiny little things or metal, I'll often use the um, super glue. And then the thing with the super glue is it takes a super long time to dry. So you want to set the item down and then leave it alone. Don't move it because it like breaks the bond immediately with the super glue. And then you have to glue it again. This is my daughter's dollhouse. And I just took a picture of this ridge line here. So basically you're starting from the outside and you're shingling towards the inside and then you have a finishing centerpiece that goes on top. So I took a picture of that so I could kind of emulate it here with this little house. I don't think the little house turned out as well as when I did my daughter's dollhouse. Um, that dollhouse we made for her, oh, it was a, her, her birthday's Christmas day. So 
Um, there's always a lot of pressure at Christmas time to make her Christmas super magical. And when she was five, she said she wanted a dollhouse because, of course, I'm addicted. And, uh, you know, she's always playing in, in my project. She's actually really careful. So we took a couple months before Christmas and we built her a dollhouse in our garage. That was a just a picture of the roof that you saw there. Um, there's a picture of my finished ridge line on this project. Uh, that was before the glue dried, so it does look better after the glue dries. I decided to add some siding because I already had it and I didn't need hardly any to do this project. So I used some French blue colored paint, painted that up, glued it to the sides. Um, I found this little rotary, like uh, I think that rotary cutter kit was this from the same Itsy Bitsy Mini that I got the green cutting mat from. And uh, here are some completed pictures after I glued everything in. Um, there's my note I wrote to my friend, uh, thanking her for all of the gorgeous quilts that she made for my family. And uh, oh, and I I put I made a bunch of fabric bolts and put them in the background. Um, on the left, on the bottom, there's actually some real quilters batting that I rolled up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.